Hi, how you guys doing? I'm excited to be on the Evergreen stage because most of the conversations I've seen today that I actually wanted to actually watch were, yeah. were here. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for joining us. I hear this isn't your uh, first trip to Slush or Finland. No, I think it's my sixth or seventh. And uh, I was born and raised in Finland, so it's always great, great to be back here and see the crazy buzz that's happening and, and so forth. So it's a really, really a pleasure to see everything. Sixth time at Slush. I think so, yeah. Well, haven't like been six counting. years ago. Yeah, uh, a bit smaller. I think this uh -huh. is kind of getting crazier and crazier every year. But, uh, you know, it, it's enjoyable. And, you know, you see a lot of new startups, a lot of friends and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, it, it's kind of one of the highlights of the year so, yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. What about you? How many times? This is my first. There should be more smoke machines, I think, and lasers. <laughs> um, yeah. well, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you do at Facebook and your background? Sure. So, uh, born and raised in Finland. I'm a startup guy. Done, uh, I think, 16, 17 startups. Uh, sold one, one company to Facebook. Decided to stay uh, at Facebook. Initially, I was running our, uh, our kind of a growth partnerships and operator partnerships around the world. So anything from AT&T to you know, small islands in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of were driving our internet inclusion program. So we did a couple of keynotes here a few years ago to talk about our free basics and internet at org initiatives. And about the last year and a half, I've been uh, kind of leading our engineering and technology across partnerships. So, so a broad organization that helps you know, partners build their products on top of our products. So it's a great, great, great role. We get to work with all kinds of uh, cool, cool companies from Apple and Uber to two guys in a garage type of yeah. scale. So kind yeah. of see all the exciting new innovations. Well, how would you describe you know, the Spark platform as being different than a lot of your competitors that are that are out here, like uh, Google and Apple. Sure, yeah. So if we dive straight to the augmented reality, um, so so I mean AR Kit and AR Core, they are like very device focused, high performance platforms. Uh, our approach is a little different. So we are building tools that are easy to use, easy to scale, mm -hmm. that are kind of a cross platform platforms. So that's kind of the first different differentiation to the to the kind of the native platforms. Then uh, secondly, if you look at the kind of the app economy, so, so in a recent month, about 49% of the users downloaded zero apps. Mm -hmm. And another 49% downloaded maybe one or two apps. So you have practically 2% that are the kind of the download ecosystem. So if you use uh, native AR platforms, you're creating an app and, and you have a, a little bit limited market, but you know, a, a bigger app in a way. And uh, if you use our tools, you can, you can create AR experiences on our host applications from Messenger to Facebook to Instagram and, and kind of use our distribution to 2.6 billion users to, to push those experiences out to the market. And uh, the AR experience can take different forms. It can be an ad form factor or um, a game and, and, and so forth. So in a way, it's a different approach, but uh, we think that uh, you can reach to a certain scale much faster than uh, using a na native app. So that's our kind of strategy there. Mm. And is there, you know, as you look at um, how it's being you know, used by developers, are there any um, unique UK use cases that you've come across? Or So I think if, if we look at use cases, uh, uh, we believe that you know, AR will be a kind of the future computing platform. So we think that there will be like a huge universe or spectrum of different use cases. And um, it's early days for augmented reality. So today we see filters and, and uh, different types of ad units being created. Um, but we see a great traction. So in the last maybe three months, we've seen 72,000 developers uh, looking at our video streams, how to create Spark. Uh, applications and, and uh, you know we had 20 people in junction just uh, I think a week or two ago here so there's a, a, a tremendous kind of uh, adoption happening to these platforms but we don't have like a, 
a million AR experiences out there on the market. And then if, if we look at kind of a per industry, uh, I think the beauty and makeup is one of these areas where we see a lot of traction happening at scale with, uh, with the a AR. So L'Oreal, for instance, has uh, ad units running in different countries around the world on Facebook where you can uh, look at the model and, and choose a certain shade for the makeup. And then you can you know, turn the experience around and look at how that makeup looks on you. So you can personalize that, that makeup and, and kind of a, it drives repeat purchases and, and very personalized kind of a shopping experience. When did it become full circle, though, and when it, be, when it turns from AR being in an app or, or something like that and it becoming something that you encounter in the real world? I know that there yeah. was the, was it the parametric codes, the QR codes yeah, that Facebook yeah. came out for with Messenger. Yep. Um, when do we get to the point where you're standing in the makeup aisle in a drugstore yeah. and you're scanning the codes and testing it? it you just yeah. wear it. Um, wear it. It'll take a while. Um, I think kind of a, there's, there's two types of kind of experiences. A lot of people, when you talk about AR, everybody thinks about glasses like this, that okay, everybody's going to wear something and, and so forth. We are getting there and we are investing a lot to, to develop these type of devices. but. Uh, you know, today we have 1.5 billion devices uh, that are capable of creating and running these AR experiences. So there's kind of an opportunity, there's technically addressable user space, um, but then, you know, you need to keep your phone like this and, and, and so forth. So you have kind of uh, different types of scenarios where you, these use cases happen. And if, if we think about the high end, use case, it's, it's probably going to be virtual reality, something that you wear on an expensive head-mounted display and the, the whole, whole he headset, and then go into a session, and that might be socially, social interactions in the session, but you know, it's, it's a session, and then you step out of it. And we think that um, kind of the AR, or the dominant AR use cases will be a lightweight device that you keep always on uh, every day. So, so you just walk around and do what you do, and you get kind of a pushed information. So the information retrieval co comes, kind of changes from pull to, to push. So the device starts to push you information without doing anything. And there we need to be obviously a bit careful how, that we don't overload the user or anything like that. But yeah. Do you have a favorite camera effect? Not really. It kind Add of changes. That's my favorite. It, it changes from time to time. My kids are, you know, love football mainly, mainly or soccer in the US. So, so different different types of uh, teams. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, when we work with you know millions of different developers, we kind of kind of see all the kind of new cool stuff happening. So I tend to change things quite often. So, so I know that Portal uh, Facebook just recently released Portal, and it's uh, you know this video chat device, and yep. um, it seems that the distinction between like a smart display like an Echo Show from Amazon or a Home Hub, yep. Google, uh, is, well, that you can have in-call experiences in part powered by augmented reality. Um, where do you see that evolving? Where's, where's that going? Yeah, it's a good question. So, so Facebook, for instance, is not well known for our hardware efforts, right? But we have uh, Oculus, we build planes, we have satellites and lasers and all, all kinds of very broad hardware skills. Um, but um, we have a team called Building 8, or B8. And uh, that team basically creates disruptive uh, social hardware devices, so hardware-based devices. And, and Portal is the first device out of the Building 8. And um, I think kind of the theme there is that it, it creates a, a social experience. And in the case of Portal, it uses AI in an in a intelligent way that you know, it zooms and focuses on the person. You can move around the room, and it kind of follows you, and, and it creates this kind of a feeling of presence. So you know, we could have a Portal session right now, and we would have a similar feeling that we would be sitting across the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of a bringing the world closer together in, in that sense. And then when we talk about AR in the, in the context of Portal, uh, there's a kind of, a kind of a unique couple of use cases. One is that um, if you 
let's say a, a grandmother wants to read a bedtime story for the grandchildren, uh, you can create a teleprompter, you can get the story for the grandma, and then you get the AR effects and animations for the kids. So, so you can enrich the real world with the, with the AR effects, and that's how kind of AR works in a way. So, is yeah. it the story time feature you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. It, and the, I know that this is, in, in the conversations that I had with the, with the portal team, there was talk about potentially adding things for like adults mm. to do stuff because story time is it is kind of fun. Yeah. But what sort of things could be developed for adults to do together in video yeah. calls? Yeah, I think it's like anything that you can do together in a group. Uh, we are not going to create those experiences, you know, over long term. So we are seeding few and testing stuff, but. Uh, Portal will be a platform like any other. We have, Facebook is a platform company, a partnerships company. So we are opening up a Portal over time, and you know developers can create their own experiences. So if you have a great idea in mind, we can find a developer Let's and get that done. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> are there? Um, do you think there's any major untackled use cases for AR thus far? I know that you know it's not really what. Facebook does, and it'd be interesting. Well, let me stop there. Is there any like, what, what do you think about the idea of like building like a like a Hololens sort of approach for like, um, is that something that Facebook could ever be interested in doing? Or yeah, 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 absolutely. So so we are building a, a kind of a glass like uh, so, device. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be in stores any anytime soon. So you know, maybe something like five to seven years, but we are investing significant resources and, and, and money to, to create that type of a device that, you know, you can wear all day, every day. And uh, I think when we have those devices at scale, then we'll start to see a lot of different use cases that are maybe not even obvious today. So, so there's a kind of a few categories, you know, you know, Kind of, a, you get information, or you can kind of a get contextual information. And, and why Facebook is doing this in a, in the a, a first place is, we have a, a social context, we have the location context, and so forth. So we can kind of a get the most relevant information to the user. But social aspect will always be there, and, and that's where we are focusing. So, yeah. Um, Are there any learnings or findings that you think that Facebook has picked up along the way in engaging with the developer ecosystem and trying to build something around your, your various products with Spark? Yeah, I think Spark is, is it's, it's kind of a early days for Spark, but uh, I think that's going well. There's, there's a great interest. We see universities that want to uh, teach coding skills, and, and they are kind of a pivoting to Spark because it's user friendly, and, and you know you can very quickly create gaming type of experiences. So that that's a kind of a positive surprise to me. I think if you take a longer perspective, what we learn to kind of uh, work with developers, we have this famous move fast and break things. It doesn't work very well with developers if you keep changing your kind of APIs and stuff like that. So I think we try to be a better actor in the ecosystem, and that's something that we've learned over the years that you know, we'll try to keep things more stable and, and kind of listen to our partners for feedback and take a little bit more mindful approach on, on our platforms and APIs and, and, and so forth. But is there any space that you see to like get beyond the the lipstick, basically the ads yep. and the the camera effects? I mean, like an enterprise play, for example, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think enterprises will will adopt it. Um, today, there's kind of a remote management. You get stuff like that, but that's not kind of a running on a, on a Spark platform at, at scale. So, so we have a sporadic use cases here and there. Uh, but over time, yeah, we'll, we'll see you know, enterprises adopting that. Uh, in VR, we see a huge adoption by different companies that have very niche use cases, and they use VR to that. Uh, I think AR will be a, a bit broader, but that's, that's going to happen as well. And are you following this broader sort of AR developer ecosystem and the sort of things that are being Produce, yeah. So, so we obviously have a partnership team focusing on, on VR and AR, and uh, and uh, we have like people around the world working in different ecosystems and, and kind of being present there. 
Uh, personally, I'm a little bit distant from, from that. We, we work with kind of a lighthouse partners directly, so, so uh, a, a large developers that are building a massive IP around it with, with our technology, so then my team engages directly. And then we try to scale those learnings to, to the broader ecosystem. So, so yes, uh, we, we work a lot with, uh, with the partners, but uh, kind of not directly with the individual developers, for instance, here in Helsinki. So, so that's kind of a, it's great to see these, these developers here, but like we haven't been actively working with many of them. Some, yes, but not, not, not mm -hmm. like at, at scale. So. Yeah. And I know that Finland has a lot of, um, well, a few notable companies in the space. Why do you think Finland is well positioned to have any sort of <clears throat> presence in, in augmented reality? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look around, uh, you see a fantastic kind of a legacy from the, the kind of the demo days of assembly and, and all the gaming companies. So a lot of those kind of a skill sets are translatable to, to VR and AR productions. So, so yes, so there's a great kind of a talent pool. Um, there's a great culture. Entrepreneurship is, is growing in, in Finland. And uh, so we see a lot of, lot of great companies. I think uh, last year we had a AR, VR team with me. The product people were here. We met like 50 companies during Slush in two days. And uh, there's not too many places in the world where you can just like sit on a sofa and, and 50 <laughs> developers kind of show amazing things like this and that. So, so yes, there's, there's definitely a lot of things happening in the Nordics and especially here in Finland. So partly due to the Slush, but also the kind of the broader ecosystem in, in, in the country. Are there any other parts of the world that you think are doing a particularly good job in producing augmented reality companies? So I think LA seems to be a hub. So there's, there's a lot of yeah. things happening around Hollywood. Uh, and uh, if we look at the kind of a demand for our, our tools, Asia is picking up extremely quickly. So we have a lot of, lot of uh, AR, VR developers in, in Japan, Korea, in Southeast Asia. So, so that's kind of a growing extremely quickly, and I think uh, the Nordics and LA, those three come to mind. So. Yeah. Sort of on, that, on the long lines of what I was talking about with um, in-call experiences for Portal, um, do you envision a point where these things are able to, uh, you know, I want to buy a couch, put the couch in an augmented reality in my room, put the art on my wall, sort of demo things within your home that before you buy them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think IKEA is doing that already. So you can uh, kind of uh, pick your sofa and, and try it out. And uh, you, know, you may save a trip to the shop or, or two. So, so that's happening. And uh, today's smartphones are extremely capable of measuring things. So, so um, you know, that's one use case. Another one that comes to mind, we have a messenger bot with KLM. And you can measure your back. Is it is it sizable or is it, you know small enough that you can put it in the cabin or do you need to check it in? So oh, yeah. you know, st stuff like that. <laughs> it's not maybe the <laughs> billion dollar business, but you know it gives a certain convenience. Well, that's practical. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you know finally games in in AR. I know that there was one messengers got one where you can like play a space invaders with your nose or <laughs> that isn't. Yeah. Seem as practical, but there is a lot of sort of games that you tend to bring to the space. Yeah, I mean, I think gaming typically is the the kind of the segment that adopts the early early technologies the, the fastest. So yeah, so yeah, yeah definitely. And uh, Messenger is a great platform for distributing games and stuff like that. I met a couple of companies that are building a kind of a VR experience where you where you can create a world with different physics and then push that to, to kind of a messenger, for instance, and, and let people play on, on, you know, using different host platforms. So very interesting technologies, and we'll, we'll kind of look into those. So. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. All right. Thanks for sharing your insights. <laughs> OK, thanks. thanks. All right.